This is 1st Platoon, Kilo Company, 3rd Battalion, 8th Marines. They're ground troops, grunts, the backbone of the Marine Corps. Six weeks ago, they left Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and boarded the USS Nassau. They've been below deck ever since, due to round-the-clock flight operations. Today, they disembark to participate in a NATO war exercise. Grab one of the ammo cans and get off the corner and fill it up. Okay, the cold weather parker with the liner will go in there. One pair of cold weather trousers, cold weather boots, the cold weather whites, a pair of socks, long johns or sweatshirt, watch cap, gloves, and a 782 belt with the gear. How'd you get all that in there? Stuffed it in. When you pack people in this close for that long, you're gonna, there's a lot of tension, a lot of frustration. They can't do too much anything, but um, like I say they've been together a long time. They work as a team, so we'll be glad to get on the land anyway. Chance to get out of here for a while. The film you are about to see followed 1st Platoon through this week-long war exercise. Our purpose? To discover not so much how it was conducted from a military point of view, but who the Marines are as people, why they subject themselves to conditions of extreme stress by choice. If there's just about an inch or two of snow on the ground where it's not gonna hinder us too much getting off the bird, what we do, pull the archeos just enough to clear them, clear the, uh, the rotor of the uh, bird, and then go ahead and set in from two to six, okay? The next thing we do, bird flipped off, okay, we got the archeo secured, then we go ahead and push the primer out for a complete 360, okay? All right, man, let's get up, get up on your feet. Pull your hood over. 53, tack one. Followed by 11, 53, tack two. Followed by 11, 53, tack three. Eight, follow him. All right, keep it tight, man. Second Lieutenant Ernie Matakata, Commander, 1st Platoon. All right, let's keep it tight. He and his men, and 6,000 other U.S. Marines, along with troops from eight NATO countries, are converging on the North Norwegian coast, which is only a few minutes' flight from the Russian border. The purpose of this exercise is to prepare NATO to defend North Norway from a Soviet attack. North Norway is strategically important because in the event of war, it would act as a barrier to the Soviet Northern Fleet. This exercise has been designed to reassure the Norwegians that if war ever does come, NATO will be ready to support them. Kilo Company are on their way to a place they have never seen, to conditions that make survival questionable. This is Brigade North Norway of the Norwegian Army. They're conscripts, but experienced ski troops, accustomed to the climate and the snow. In this exercise, they'll be defending their homeland against, among others, Kilo Company's first platoon. The whole idea is that we are trained as good as we can with our soldiers to stop them for a few days and wait for help so that we can save our population. These troopers here come from the western coast and they are clerks, they are fishermen, they have all kinds of jobs. Within 24 hours, it came by plane, uh, equipped with light scale. 
equipment. They are born here and they've lived here. They have a high level of motivation to defend their country simply because they love their country and the uh, Second World War is not that far away. The people who live in this cold and sometimes barren land still remember being overrun by the Nazis. Determined not to allow themselves to be taken again, the Norwegian government has hidden caches of military equipment everywhere, in barns, under houses, in caves, ready to be put to instant use in the event of attack. There are 32 men in 1st platoon. They range in age from 17 to 31. Like most of those who've recently joined the Marines, almost all are high school graduates, and many have graduated from college. About half are family men. If they follow the typical pattern, 40% will re-enlist. Good road to wash. Good road to wash. All right. Let's serve a tune up there. Okay. We're getting ready to tie with them right now. Staff Sergeant Mike Murphy, 31, Lieutenant Matakata's right hand man. Keep the Ankios back here. The Marine Corps gives specific jobs to platoon lieutenants and staff sergeants. Lieutenant Matakata has the job of platoon tactician. Moving people just down on the military crest. Staff Sergeant Murphy's job is to see that Matakata's plans are carried out. But it's also his job to take care of the men, to tend to their well-being. All right, machine gun, right over here. Double check here, make sure I'll just push the people a little bit further up as soon as... The Marine Corps knows that if the relationship between these two men is strong, they will have a good fighting unit. All right, Marines, let's go. And that if it isn't, men may die unnecessarily. Uh, we've been on the ground. Not quite five minutes, and uh, we're pretty well organized right now. Uh, everybody's accounted for, all the gear is here. That's the most important part, it's gonna lose anybody. All right, let's go, Jess. Let's Just move it, dogs. All right, Chuck. Uh, good job. Oh, 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 oh. Go. Let's go. Pull up. Let's go. Here go. All right. Go. Keep pulling, dog. Hey, isn't it great to be off that damn ship and walking on land? Feel good know, to me. Makes me feel bad. I get paid. Makes you want to go back home. United States Marine Corps, world's finest. Just thank all the people that got to pay big prices to go to a damn ski resort. You get a free trip. Just thank you. Yeah. The weather we have until now is bad for us. It's too good. So uh, what we like is to uh, move during nights, during snow, and uh, to cut off his flank and, his, uh, and back to his uh, support elements. They, they spotted two uh, skiers before, but they just, they saw him. I don't think a skier saw Roe or uh, her hand and they went. Civilian or military? Yeah, military. Yeah. yeah. This place is, I think it's crawling with those ski trees. Go ahead and send a, a whole fire team up there to secure the top of the hill. That's what I'm waiting for. Wait for the signal. I'm just waiting for those to get up there. Okay. How's everybody doing back there? It's fine. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go. Ah. 
counter. Damn. Damn. Everybody good? It takes a a certain person to be a Marine. Now, when you talk about armed services, they're all pay the same, you know, and you can join any one of them. But the Marines have got a reputation where they've been tough, and people know this. And there's only a, a special breed of person that joins the Marine Corps because they're looking for the challenge, you know, something that's harder than the rest, something they can say, hey, I have accomplished this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The big thing that makes the Marine Corps what it is is the discipline of the Marine Corps. I mean, and the comradeship. Listen up, Marines. We depend on each other. You got about 40 meters to go. We have to. When you get up by Hernandez, go ahead, sit down, take a break, take your packs off, open up your clothes and ventilate. You're going to overheat. Good job coming up the hill. You're almost there. The self-confidence, the self-reliance, the teamwork, the pride. That's what makes a Marine. And that's what makes us special. Watch out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Thank you. Two sides of the break. Downhill from here, bro. Hell yeah. You have a big chance back here. I'm totally down here. Look at this. Let's just break down. Let me get a break, man. Tell us a little bit about the enemy. We haven't seen him. No. But uh, we heard a lot of him. Mm. Well, we waited a while for the Marines. But when they came, they came very strongly. <laughs> That's the way I think the ordinary Norwegian soldier would have uh, evaluated it when he recognized what was happening. A lot of helicopters and a heavy fist coming when they came. I told them to sit down and open up their clothes. All of them in pretty bad shape. That sled kicked their ass in my hill. All I want to do is get the, uh, get the sleds under some trees. And All right, so it. as soon as I get them all up there, I'll defer them right up in front of us. We're going to put right people, in here. Put people out over here. The Accio, an Arctic sled, is the Marines' chief snow transport. It carries 250 pounds of equipment, everything they'll need to survive. Ready, okay. set. Pull it up, pull it up. Okay, go. Is this one too tight? All right. Okay, you got your gear accounted for now? How's everybody feeling? Isn't it great to be out here? Yeah, Olsen, how about a little conviction when you say that? A little enthusiasm. As far as the operation here, our worst enemy is the weather. You people have any cold project? You know, it's very cold, it's wet. When's the last time a corn checked y'all? We have a heavy load to carry, and with all the layers of clothes we wear, you know, to keep warm with, we start sweating very easily. You look cold. And then when we stop, that sweat starts turning to ice. All right, look at all these hard chargers. Mm. We're going up and down the line, just, you know, every time we stop, just checking everybody. Y'all brought your packs over yet? OK, make sure we get them in before it gets dark so we don't lose anything out here. Checking their feet, checking their hands, making sure they're moving. And, uh, you know, making sure we don't have any cold casualties like that. How's everybody doing? Have you cranked up that stove yet? I don't think any of us like it out here. It's too cold. You know, I think uh, the ideal situation for, for us is <laughs> To have a very small pack on our back, a poncho, a poncho liner, don't even take a sleeping bag, wear what we're going to wear, and go like that. This is extreme. He's had bad luck all day anyway. If you didn't have bad luck, you wouldn't have none at all, would you? Almost When you get out here, you can't lie to yourself. You can't lie to your fellow Marine. The men can't lie to me, and I can't lie to them. You know, you can only be so tough. And I think it's... You have to be even a little tougher to tell me, you know, well, sir, you know, I'm really cold. I, I, I got to go in. Well, fine, let's take care of it. You got to be able to say things like that. Get your mittens out right now. Matter of fact, hey. Come here, Wilson. 
You can't sit there and shake and freeze until you die, because you're no use to anybody. You're no use to the man next to you. You're no use to the overall mission. Can you feel them? Mm -hmm. Do they hurt? Yeah. They tingle? Yeah. They're well, at least they're tingling. That's, I think that's, that's being tough. Take both your hands, take off your gloves, stick them under my arms. OK. You're what on. would a corpsman say? Come on. OK. Now your feet. Frozen? Mm-mm. You're sure. back. Fine. I'm just wet. Hi. Yeah, man. As soon as we get you in the tent and get the uh, stove going, I want you to go ahead. OK? What we're going to do is strip all your gear off. I want you to get clean, long johns. I want you to hang this up in the ceiling. Here's the stove. OK? Yeah. Do you see what happens when you don't listen to people? When you want to go your own way and be a damn hammerhead? Now, well, if you I'm die making... out here, it's going to be your fault, nobody else's. You understand? That's but I get blamed. Now, listen to what the corner of squad there tells you. Hey, uh, shoot me. hands feeling? Everybody else all right? Yeah. They tingling still or are they hurting now? They're still hurting. Good. That means they're warming up. Just hold them on there. I, uh, even though we've got one or two outposts up there, the uh, Norwegian is such good ski troops. I, I really, uh, I really worry about them taking sure. off around midnight. Uh, in small patrols and skiing between us, and before we know it, they're gone and they're, they're coming down the, uh, down and back. Of us. So uh, if it starts to get nas nasty out here and really that snow, and I'm going to pull back even farther and really put some outposts back in here and, and uh, prepare for them uh, to go on the offensive. The Norwegians are conscripts, but they are a formidable fighting force because they are highly skilled bad weather troops who are defending their homeland. And because every Norwegian is taught to remember the humiliation Norway felt during World War II. All the gear inside? Everybody all right? Okay, no problems with anyone yet? No cold casualties? No. Corman been checking your people? He hasn't been up this way yet, but he said he'd come up. I don't feel that, that, that we're any better than anybody else as far as, you know, on, on a man per man basis, you know, I feel that the difference is the training that we get and the uh, qualities that we have inside of us. Make it into a semi-point, like a, uh, almost a flathead. I've been in the Marine Corps almost 10 years, and I can still remember the pride that I felt, you know, the first time somebody come up and say, you know, good going, Marine, fine job. You know, I, I felt like I was about 10 feet tall, could take on the world. The self-confidence, the self-reliance was fantastic. Papa was a rolling stone. Wherever he laid his hat was his home. And when he died, all that left us was a lonely, 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 lonely. It was the best feeling I've ever, I've ever known. You know, I never, I never graduated high school, and I, I never, you know, I was part of a team that finally won. You know, I was on that team that won. You know. It was like, damn, I did something, you know? I did something for myself. And you know, I wanted to quit so many times at boot camp, you know? I told them, I, I told my drill instructors one time, you know? I don't want to be here. And you know, and I, there's guys in there that I didn't know, and they said, Horan, you do, you know? It's just, you know, you had a bad day and stuff. But it's a, it's a great feeling. I know everybody here knows that feeling. It's like... It's, it's a, a day where if you've had, ever had any other doubt, that you, you know, you've ever earned nothing, anything at all, okay? There was no doubt in your mind the day they said uh, platoon, whatever it was you was in, dismissed. You took it one back, back step, you about face, and it was just tears. You know? yeah. it, it's just, you were just so, you were just so fulfilled from having to accomplish really something special. You know, you made something of yourself. You accomplished uh, one of the hardest tasks there is, and that is completing parachute and basic training. I did a lot of growing up when I came in. I was, you know, partied a lot when I was back 18, which wasn't very long ago, but... I'm there now. <laughs> you, uh, it really does bring a uh, big change in you, you know, personality. You see guys that come in and they'll go through Marine Corps in, in the Marine Corps and they'll go back home and leave or something. And they seem like they're older to the other people there and to themselves. They they act older. 
you know, like, they just, they grow up real fast. My friend thought I was an imposter when I was here. <laughs> so, John, I, what happened? What'd they do to you? Nothing. I was just staying there, you know, not talking, not minding my business, not causing trouble. It's really good, too, because you get to look at them and see that nothing's changed. You know, you get to go home and you see that they're still doing the same thing that they've always been doing and probably will always be doing. And y'all making something out of yourself. Well, when I come home now, they ask me, they still ask me about it, you know. You know, it, it, they can tell that it's made a big improvement on me, you know. You know, when I go home, I don't, I don't do a lot of things that I used to do. Because mostly when I was home, you know, we, I used to have, be hanging out with these guys and we just, we look for trouble. It's just simple as that. We'd look for it. I think most guys here prove something more to themselves than they do to somebody else. And once you prove something to yourself, it just, you, you naturally prove things to other people. You don't have to put on no show and say, I'm macho or something like that. You just, once you learn pride and confidence in yourself, it just automatically comes to the surface and everybody else sees it. You know, before I come in the Marine Corps, I thought I had things so bad. <laughs> Jesus. You know, poor, I was, I was like, poor me, poor Dave. He had everything. He didn't have this, he didn't. You know, I, I had everything. We're like day and night. I had, I thought I had, you know, I had it made. But, you know, we're a lot alike in other ways, too, from coming from two total different places. One thing we find, though, that both of us came in for is a challenge. I like, I yeah, had that's it, it, but it didn't mean nothing because yeah. without a challenge, that's what we all wanted. We wanted yeah. the ultimate challenge. Bread, milk, it's very good. And marmalade, cheese, and coffee. Small packages of butter. How do you think uh, it's different from what you eat? to what the uh, Americans eat? Well, I, I think the Americans eat more prepared food. We have to prepare it ourselves. That's what I think. I never seen Americans. I'll, I'll take anything for ham and chicken. Pork patty. Chicken I'll like I'll take a pork patty. <laughs> Long way from steaks. <laughs> but if it's warm, I guess that's, that's about 90% of the fight there. You kidding? That dehydrated potato. I, I put that cocoa in there. For some water. Where we were last night. we were. we were. Just gives the potato a little more flavor, I guess. I like it. <laughs> Ain't bad. It smells like tar. Tastes bad. Coffee bed on your heart. Wow. Ain't it, Colonel? That's right. Uh, probably wouldn't be a good idea to smoke in church. Uh, put that as mildly as I can. <laughs> Did y'all stay pretty warm last night? Hell yes, sir. Yep. I'll tell you what, Norway kind of surprised me. It's rough, but it's not, uh, it's not that rough. Not really. We've been able to make it. Hands a little cold, feet a little bit cold, but we're doing okay. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for all that you've done for us. We praise you for the hope that we have. We pray that that hope might sustain us in the days ahead. Teach us to care for one another. Teach us to help the man on the right and the left of us. Teach us to look out for each other. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We have the enemy on the move at grid coordinates 202. Colonel, it looks to me like they could be uh, thinking about sliding in behind us from the east there. I think Kilo ought to be uh, alerted to the fact that they might uh, receive some action. Command headquarters selected Kilo Company to defend a perimeter against a probable attack. But Marine units have a great deal of independence in the field, 
and it was left to Lieutenant Matakata and Sergeant Murphy to determine exactly how 1st Platoon should carry out that assignment. Go ahead and, and issue an order to Kilo to de deploy along that uh, north-south boundary and, uh, and block that avenue of approach. Expect them to probably have an attack within a couple of hours. Yes, sir. See the low areas. Probably their avenue of approach would be right through in here. Okay, behind us. In the Marines, we're taught two objectives of leadership. The first is to accomplish the mission. Your responsibility is going to be right here in the open. The second is the welfare of the troops. Today's the day. If we get attacked, today's the day it's going to happen here. And I don't care whether it's a training exercise in the snow or capturing a mountain in the jungle. It's still the same. Uh, digging flight positions. Uh, I'm starting to whiten at the tip. Signs of frostness. It's kind of hard. After we accomplish the mission, then we look after each other. This one more hard than the other. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, uh -huh. starting to get kind of bad there. We don't want frostbite to set in. All right, first squad, we got just about an hour to get dug in and get set in. So let's get to work on it. Uh, How come you digging it so deep there? Why? Yeah. Because if anything's going to come in, any incoming artillery or mortars, I want something I can cover my ass. <laughs> the only thing that'll beat us is if we let ourselves get beat. And that ain't going to happen. Not in this company anyway, so. And that's about it for this. We'll see. I'm looking forward to seeing them if they come down. But I think they're going to be surprised, too, if they, uh, if they come from the way I think they're coming. Those guys aren't carrying no packs, are they? Mm-mm. Not on them skis. Yeah, they look like they're moving pretty good. See what it is. They, they just picked up some six to ten men on skis. It's probably just a recon team trying to find an, uh, an avenue of approach to come in on us. We need to let somebody know that we've spotted them, that they're out there. That's a squad together. Looks like they got some uh, Norwegian skiers coming towards this position here. OK. Senator Star Murphy? I'm going up to the OP. We got a lot of faith and a lot of confidence in Lieutenant Maricotta. Okay. He is the one, whenever an attack or anything has to be done of a tactical nature, right he's the one that makes the decisions. The CO might be coming up here, right, so just tell him what we got. He's the one that decides how we're going to move to the contact, how we're going to assault, you know, what formations to use. And these are all things that he has to do on a split second. He doesn't have a whole lot of time to think about this. All right, they, uh, they went up and down that trail twice, sir. You see where they skied down and they climbed up? Right, I can see it. They, they, we got two at the bottom of that hill, and about 10 minutes ago, they climbed back up and skied back down. There's, there's no room for indecisiveness on the battlefield. Okay, he's got about two seconds to make up his mind, and whatever he decides has to be right, or people are gonna die. Stay up here. This is the best position for you. Olsen, as soon as you see him again, let me know. I trust him with my life and 30 other lives. You know, I have to. Now, when, when we stop the attack, do you want us to envelop on them? Or you just want to come up online here? We'll call it while we call what happens. Okay. You know, if a person makes a mistake here in a training exercise, that's not too bad. We'll be waiting for a signal. Use your smoke, squad leaders. But if he makes okay. the same mistake when we go into combat, people are going to get killed because of it. Hey, you two in this hole? Keep digging. You know, it's just that instantaneous action that's going to keep people alive, and, and that's what we drill them to every day. Every day, every day, every day. Stand by. Make sure you lock and load it. Make sure you lock and load it there, Pitch. We study the tactics Make of sure war like a doctor studies surgery. That's the way we look at it. We treat combat like a science, and we learn it like a science. Then we practice, and we practice, and we practice. Our job is to get in there fast, then take an area and defend it until the army arrives. We don't have a whole lot of heavy weapons and equipment to flow us up. What we do have is our tactics, our combat skills, and each other. Neil it. 
Dette er en... Vi ber om å få bekreftet marsjberedskap og tidspunkt. Over. Goodbye, set. When a battle comes, there's always fear. Anybody who's ever been in combat knows that. It's terrifying for both sides. But we train to create that fear so that the enemy feels terrified. So then what's the difference between the winner and the loser? It's how you react to that fear. We're taught to react to it automatically, and we practice that all the time. Discipline. is to direct the battle and motivate the men. And that often means exposing himself to enemy fire. As a result, in actual combat, the second lieutenant's casualty rate has been extremely high. Right out towards the right! Right out towards the right! Get out! All right, come on, bring your squad around and go up on the Norwegian troops skied through this ravine, and the Marines were able to uh, trap them in the ravine with fire from uh, left and right flanks. So at this time, I'd say the Marines uh, were able to, through this attack, to, uh, to kill every man who came through that ravine. Really? Yes, sir. Let's go, second squad. Just want to report back, Corporal Smith. We're going back on 50% alert. So they came. They came skiing through about 50 miles now. I didn't think they'd be shooting off them rifles on their skis, but I don't think they'd have made it through those people up there. Pretty good smoke screen. Everybody's confused. And I think we got half of them split up down there, and the other ones are wandering up on the hilltop. They're pretty good skiers, huh? Ah, oh, they're real good. That's we have to be impartial. Go ahead. So um, I sir. think that uh, it was a good, um, good exercise for both parties. Sir. Um, if you weren't surprised, you could have been, because going on skis in the snow, it's silent, you know, very silent. Uh, they, uh, Norwegians, uh, they were a little too, um, they weren't tough enough. Uh, but that um, has a very good reason, because many of them has uh, been in the civilian life for four years. And that's much, you know, you forget much. I was, uh, I was really sorry. I was good. That's the first time we've ever been attacked by ski troops before. And it was kind of, it was different. It was really surprised. I looked up and here come one of your troops, one of the skis with a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> kind of unbalanced us for a minute, but it was real good. It's the first time I am fighting against the U.S. Army, too. Okay, we, we're Marines. We're Marines, yes. Marines, yeah. Now, I, I got my, brought my... Uh, platoon up here to meet your soldiers. Is that all right? They like to talk, you know, and, and take pictures with them and everything. This is uh, Corporal Smith, one of my squad leaders, and uh, this is the sergeant in charge of all the Norwegians. And we're talking. He's a, he's a he's a banker by trade. Yeah. Yeah, I love the snow. We come from uh, the west of Norway. There are not snow. No snow. Very very little. <laughs> you guys have snow machines. Snow machines, you, you know, scooters? No. Yeah, yes. where you, where you drive around the, the big tracks. You use this? No, we no. don't have them here, but I've got them back at home. I see. Yeah, I drive around in the snow in them. I love them. Oh, the what the yeah. is that, man? I beg your pardon? You will freeze up, I? No, I lay down upside in the hill here and shot at you. <laughs> Some snow on my gun. 
<laughs> See the yeah. one right there? Yeah. All right, you line that one up with the tip of that, and that's approximately 100 meters. They are 20 years old when they have to go into the army. Oh, that's when they have to go through. Yeah. By they 20. Yes. Okay, like, you know, say a person you know, like, didn't want to go in the army, you know, you know, something happened to him? Yes, uh, that's not uh, legal. You have to go into the army if he's uh, not sick. Well, if uh, there are some persons who don't have to, if your religion tell you not to um, make war, then you don't have to. You see, our officers are not so uh, like this. We have to. We are. Uh, are you all officers? No, no. no. But no. you don't. Know, don't. We don't shave every day. No, they. They like us to stay clean shaven. <coughs> no. Yes. No beard. But Mustache is very small. Mm. Regulations. Yeah. You shouldn't uh, shave in really... the morning. Huh? You shouldn't shave in the morning. You should shave just in the evening. Uh, yeah. Because, hair. Because. Yeah, I see. Oh, hair. <laughs> <laughs> like prisoners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long have you been up here now? Did Four, you come up with Sorry? Yes, yes. No. Yeah, uh, 14 days. 14 days? Yes. I came uh, one week uh, earlier. <laughs> Let me ask something. Where's all the women at? <laughs> <laughs> There's no, no women. I don't know. I haven't seen that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you find them, let me know. Yeah, let yes. me know. Yeah. <laughs> it was fantastic. I mean, we really had a good time. We found out there are a hell of a bunch of nice guys. Can't speak English. Uh, it's okay. We understand. <laughs> you know, my Marines been out there pulling them sleds all day long. You, you, you feel sorry for them. That fought against the English. And this is just what they needed, a little break where they could unwind. A lot of George in there. They could talk to soldiers from another nationality, get to know them. All right. <laughs> you know, to me, uh, getting to know them and talk to them makes the whole uh, operation all worthwhile. Like this. Yeah. Mm. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> Listen, good job. I hope you get to America someday. Yes, I think I really you'll like it, you know, the visit and everything. I really enjoy being here in Norway, beautiful country. Doc, take care of yourself. Good to see you. Nice talk to you. Bye. Thanks. Take care. Take it easy. Take care, Doc. See you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed yeah! It. Hey, all right. Goodbye. It's outrageous. So that's why you string a uh, calm wire up about neck high. <laughs> <laughs> Did everybody get the... Hey, you mate. You see Tate and uh, Smith? They coming? If I was to write you a letter and describe what's going on here, how the troops are doing, you could never believe this is something you actually have to see. You know, and that's why you're making a movie, so people can see what's going on. That's it. One more, right on top there. They want to be the best. And they know something's got to be done. And they care for each other. You got, you, I want you to stand about uh, 25, 30 meters behind me. Okay. And I like that. And that's what I've been striving ever since I've been here to get from these uh, young men is the teamwork and the family concept, because you get that, and they can do anything. The Navy has their, their ships. They got the carriers and the cruisers and the destroyers. The, the Air Force has their planes, and they're systems type people, and they got to keep those things running. The Marine Corps has a Marine Rifleman. No wars are won just by planes alone or by uh, uh, ships at sea. It's got to be the individual soldier on the ground. But, uh, and he, he, of course, takes, takes the most punishment, has the hardest time of it, but uh, it'll, be the, it'll be the infantryman that will that'll do it in the end. I will. Back here. 
Right this way, right here. There's a lot of times when I, when I see them and I get pretty upset with the way they treat each other. But then the time when it comes to anything tough, you know, move a tree, move a mountain, you'll see all of them band together. And then uh, all the things that you've seen them done wrong, when you see them do one thing like that one time, then you know it's all worth it. And you know that's why they're so good. It's because they can pull together. You gotta put them in deep. And you know, they may not all be the best of friends and a lot of them still have a lot of personal problems with each other. But when it, when it comes down for them to work and to get something done, they all come together because they know without the next man, then they're not really anything. Well, we're just average guys, but the way we're thrown together and made to like one another, being so far apart as far as cultures, the way we're raised, it makes you tighter, it pulls you together, especially going through things like this. When you spend time sweating together and bleeding together and being cold together, you start to get closer to one another, know one another, each, each person individually, how he is, what he is, what he thinks just by the look in his eyes and how he feels all the time. Posey. Oh, hey, who's this? Chiquita? Cutler. Daniels. Coulter. Rowe. Check it out, look at all the mail. Doc Wilson, Tate, Tate, Tate. J.M., mm. Wilhelm, and the bank still likes you. <laughs> Ramirez, <laughs> Marla, Don't Wilma Smith, right. and the last one is Smith R.R. Uh, That's it. Shorter. Yeah. Shorter. 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 Murphy. Shorter. Hey! From my wife. She's still thinking about me. Hadn't found anybody new yet. But she still got money. And she just another got another visa card, which is all she damn needs. Mm. <laughs> nice to get another idea. Right she you wouldn't believe how nice. Uh, Motivating, very motivating. Put a smile on your face. It could be raining and sleeting right now, I'd still be smiling. My language is this is for my mother, so don't curse in front of my mother's letters. Oh, Shut up, Please. Please. So many memories. God damn, I must be missing a lot. Beautiful, they say. The sun's shining, it's 85 degrees, and the beach is beautiful. 85 degrees Fahrenheit. How's those oranges doing? They frozen? No, if it's 85 degrees, why should it be frozen? Give me Florida any day, any day. My grandmother's in the hospital. Come on, man, why do you want to give us some bad news? Well, because I just got it. What do you want me to do? I don't want to hear about it. Excuse me, I'll keep it to myself. <laughs> my nephew died. Oh, sorry to hear that. Damn, I must oh. be missing a letter because she just says Bubba was buried at 10 a.m. yesterday. How, how old is he? Six. Six years old? Wow. Yeah, he was Bummer. mentally retarded. What a bummer. Tell you, before I come in here, I was looking out for me and only me. I, you know, I had a lot of acquaintances, you know, before I come in here, but not really too many real good friends. You know, I didn't, I really didn't, I looked out for me and took care of myself. We're in here, you know, like these guys around here. You know, I don't really know them. I've only known them for about a year now, most of them. And, you know, I've, I feel, you know, we don't say it amongst each other, but I feel closer than these guys, you know? Because I know they're at your, you know they're there behind you to back you up, you know? Everybody's, you know, different, 
different races from different pe uh, places. But, you know, we all got one thing in common. We're here, you know, we're Marines. You know, we're together here in this one place. So it's, it's nice to go home, too, when you get a chance. This will be the longest I ever been away from home. Eight months. Long time. Too long. <laughs> Usually we're doing so much, we're busy all the time, you know? Like, Corporal Smith, sometimes, you know, he, he tells us to do stuff, and it's a real pain in the neck, you know? And I think he's a real jerk sometimes. <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta put up with it, you know? Oh, you know, like, duty. You know, I gotta go out there, as soon as we're done here, and patrol up and down. I don't wanna do it, but if I don't do it, he'll get on my back, you know? And there's a reason for that, to look out for the other Marines that are in the other tents right now. <coughs> it's just yeah. some of those details, it's, it's got to be done. And they get past me, and I've got to pass them to my men, all right? But yet they know that it's got to be done, all right? Or something's going to hit the fan, all right? Yeah. So uh, they do it. And I can go and say, uh, OK, I need a couple of volunteers. No doubt they know it's going to be some kind of two-bit job. But yet they go ahead and volunteer just to get it over with. Every day. When we they knew what it was like to get out of a sleeping bag in the morning. <laughs> when you're so cold, <laughs> when you're so cold, you're in pain and it hurts. Just being out there on fire watch and you're freezing to death because your feet are wet or just some minor yeah. technicality. But if they appreciate it half as much. It must hurt that they don't. Right. We but, would... but yet inside, we got our own pride. We know what we have accomplished and we know that we don't have to prove it to them. It's just something between us right here. We wouldn't say it to each other, but we'll say, you know, it, it's a fair, we're a team, we're a team. We're a team right here, every one of us. But we never, we really never, we knew it, but never told each other, you know? You know you can feel Learning it. a lot. Can I can feel, feel it right now. It. If you could be sitting right where I'm sitting right now, you could feel it, you know? I can feel it in Cutler, just, you know, he's a he's quiet guy. But mo when you go home, most people don't respect nothing about anybody else. It's just, it's a dog, eat dog world. But if most people served in the military for a short time... The Marine Corps. Well, yes. the Marine Corps. They'd learn to respect each other. And that way, when you went home, maybe everybody would, would have a lot more appreciation for each other. Yeah. Yeah. More, than, more than repeat anything that's been said here again tonight, one of us is going to start just crack one joke, and that's all it's going to take. Yeah. We're going to crack jokes in such an extreme that nobody has ever heard before, <laughs> and it's not being able to put on tape. Yeah, that's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't care if there's. I'm not taking no Navy shower. Turn the water on, turn it off, soap up, turn it off. Uh -uh. They got hot water. I'm going to use as much as I can. I wish we could stay out here a little bit longer, though. I don't. <laughs> we might be able to one more night. <laughs> it's good to be going. After about a week on the ship, I wish we were back out here again. Oh, boy. Make sure you got all your gear when you go up there. Packs, rifles, machine guns, everything. Right, Williams? I'm trying to get back loaded aboard ship, mm -hmm. and we're going into the Mediterranean for six months mm -hmm. on, uh, on deployment now. Mm -hmm. We're going to take off all this, this cold yeah. weather gear and all these tents, and we're going to turn it into boxes, we're going to fly it back to the United States, mm -hmm. and we're going to pick up all our, our warm weather gear and, uh, and head to the Mediterranean. And it's going to be exciting six months for me and, uh, as a battalion commander. Your Marines have the will, and that's, that's the most important thing, I think. So oh. the other, other thing you, you can learn, yeah. But if you have the will, it's, it's, it, I think it will work very good. Yeah. Listen up. Well, on the road, well. packs on, ready to go. First squad, second squad, right machine guns, assault, third squad. Smell some music. Oh, no. oh that's my man. <laughs> Look at all the soldiers, they walk around, why can't, look at this, they're going to the, they're going to the hotel. Now that's it, Norwegian Army gets, gets, gets to go to the hotel. We get the pup tent. <laughs> I've walked my damn last hill in this country. Is it a good exercise, do you think? It was good, it was real good, as a matter of fact. Good all around, for, I think for, uh, my point of view is getting, as far as learning to work in this kind of terrain and good for the troops to find out how you know how how hard life can really be out here. I think it really taxed everybody mentally and physically. So it was good. I think we did good. I think we did outstanding as a matter of fact. Well, I think he's being a little biased. Yeah, I have two feelings about going to Beirut. I'm a little bit afraid of what could happen, and I'm, I have a lot of anticipations. I question myself time and time again if I'm gonna be able to make the right decision when there's real rounds coming in, if I'll be able to react the way I've been reacting out here. I think I've made pretty good decisions for my men. But what's gonna happen when I see uh, the first one of my men killed? You know, I don't know what I'll do. Hopefully I'll be able to carry on the way I've planned it, you hate to see a man go down. You know, you want to stop and carry him yourself. But you got the other 30-some-odd Marines that I got to take care of still. That's my other feeling is what's going to happen with these guys. I get your gear off, fall platoon formation. Time to go. Break it off on the end. Dad, who? They want to, to show the world their stuff. Because they're Marines, and they've got a reputation that's going to be hard for anybody to live up to. Right. And they're proud. And that's the one thing that I can say about these, the pride in being a Marine. Come on, fire from the left. And they just want to show it to America to say, hey, when you need us, we're here, you can count on us. Turn left. 